it's been a while since I've been able to fabricate something in my shop. I've been too busy working on my house and doing a lot of work in my on my land. And that is the reason I'm building this stump bucket. I've been cutting down a bunch of trees and clearing out some land and I don't have any way to get the stumps out. So I'm hoping I can build a light duty stump bucket and it should be able to do the job if I take it easy. I take it easy. But I have the majority of what I need cut. A lot of stuff I, I wasn't sure quite if it was going to fit correctly. So I need to get it fabricated up before I can cut the rest of the parts for it. But I reckon I'll, I'll just set y'all up and let you watch. Give a few tips and tricks here and there. Throw in a time lapse video of me cutting this stuff out. This is my first time ever cutting 3 16 plate on my CNC, but this is the front edge that was facing up on it. I mean, you can just see how clean the cuts are on it. And this is the back side. I didn't hardly have any dross left over at all. I mean, there's a slight little chamfer of it, but overall, I mean, it, it cut nice made some upgrades to my shop too i have a uh mig set up i've been using flux core for years and i decided to finally buy a bottle and test out the mig capabilities of this machine i love it it's the uh millermatic 180. we're gonna start with the main frame here well hey there daisy I'm gonna have 44 and 3 8 between these two pieces of flat plate. You gotta cut your gas on. Forty-four and three eighths. Bye bye, Daisy. Now we got it right this way. I can get it right this way, which is pretty spot on on this one. This one not so much. Forty-eight and three sixteenths. Forty-eight and five sixteenths. I think we'd be all right with that. By the time I weld all this, it's gonna be warped anyway. I'm gonna finish tacking this up, and we're gonna try to stick on one of the side pieces. I like it. All right, let's see how this is going to play out. I have no idea where this is being placed at the moment. I just know it's going to go up here like this. Probably going to flush it up at the bottom. It's going to come up at an angle like this. The top's going to lean outward. The portion here at the end, there's a, I don't know if you can see it, I have this angle here. This portion is going to be perfect. It's going to be 10 inches wide, 12 inches wide, whatever I decide here. And then this portion is going to go from 10 inches and taper off the width we actually need. This is the part I have to figure out. So now, 
I'm going to mark the center of this. So I can figure out exactly what's going to happen here. I decided to draw it up on the table. Then I can just tack it to the table and I can get all my measurements and I can cut everything in one go. But I know the bottom of this bucket in the front is supposed to be 12 and a half by 12. Then we'll see how this works out. It's going to get interesting. I'll center that up on there how it should be. Let's set this up at 13. On my center line, now I'm gonna mark one inch. And on this side, I'm gonna mark 25 inches. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm just gonna double check that my lines are actually in the center. That's 10 and 316. I gotta lean this out a long way. Maybe my tacks won't break. Oh yeah, these tacks are definitely gonna break. 100%. Supposed to be 24 inches. This is our back piece. So 13 and 3 eighths to 12 and a half. All right, let's draw this up and get it cut. find out what the best setting for this is. Right now we're at 44 inches a minute. So we're about at max there. But you still kind of throw clean. Alright, we got them all cut. This last one I cut, it was at 50 or 48 inches a minute. And it still pops right on out. But, well, that's because we cut right on top of that piece of flat bar. Overall, it's a pretty good cut on this. Maybe you'll see. I keep having to move y'all around. I opened up my garage door. Now we got all our pieces cut. And I believe while it's laying here, I might go ahead and tack this piece in. I might have cleaned it up first though. this I should be able to put the this piece in tack it and then put the back on give her a little tappy tap and we pray everything fits and that looks promising looks like my drawing anyway now we'll get the back fitted up and this should go together. Maybe. Well, I need to work on building me. It's a bigger, uh, a welding table in general. Because I do not own one. Beautiful. Now this should fit inside with some slight modifications. 
little tack there. A little tack here. Just pull this one out and let this lap into it. And they'll hold it where I need it. Yeah, maybe. I'm trying to leave a little bit of a groove here so I can fully weld that out. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the inside. I'm going to fully weld everything. When you're dealing with dirt, you can pack it in and it'll end up splitting your joints apart. So you want to seal everything pretty well. I'm going to flip it on that side to where I have more leverage to hold this in. Now you more or less have an idea of what it's going to look like. Looks pretty cool. Looks a lot different than I imagined it. Well, not really. Definitely seems smaller than I expected. From the back side here to the end is roughly right at four foot. My machine only cuts 47 and a half inches the long way. And this was like its max. The front here, I'm gonna take a piece of 3 8 uh, flat bar, probably four or five inches wide. Now I'm gonna put a cutting edge on it. And then I'm gonna have another uh, 3 8 plate I'm gonna cut out on my CNC. And I'm gonna make it have like teeth. You'll have three big teeth sticking out right here. And I'll end up wearing it out before any of the other, the rest of it, I would think. And I'll have it where that just bolts on and I can replace it later on. And then I'll already have the cut file. I'll just have to have some 3 8 material and I can cut me some new teeth. And I'll be able to have a bunch of different designs. I say we get this thing mounted up to that. I'm not going to fully put it against it or tack it to it and get it ready. I'm just going to see how it's all going to fit together. Then I mounted it on this angle on purpose. So that whenever I tilt my tilt it up all the way, I'll have it at a much greater angle than if I would have just mounted it flat. There's only so much it could tilt up. But tomorrow, I'm gonna get ready to put my gussets in. That's gonna tie back into the bucket here. I'm gonna make them as long as I can with what material I have left on the CNC. I'm gonna bring it down, tie it in. Same thing with the bottom. And before I attach all of that, I'm going to get my pieces that's going to attach this to the skidster. So this is going to be a little gusset that sits up here. It's just going to give it extra stability on the top of the quick connect. Because this is going to sit up here about like this. This is the perfect size for, the, for my skidster to link into it. Then this will be welded at the angle it needs to be at. I have a gusset for it too. Then my skidster will be able to hook up to it and then the pin to lock in and hold this thing in. But that's for tomorrow. You're doing good, Billy. You're doing great. Gas on. I always forget that part. I really need to make a welding table. Next project, welding table. One day. We are gonna get the quick attach set up for this. I'm gonna start with these pieces Billy is cleaning up for me. I'm just gonna tack this on. We're literally a foot short. Okay. I'm gonna use jumper cables. So you gotta get crafty out here. This ain't the first time I've done this. Boom. Structurally intact. Have you been riding around with a tire like that? Yes. 
You, you find something wrong with my tire, man? Nothing. I really didn't think nothing was wrong with it. That looks beautiful. I hope you don't end up putting my eyeball out with that. So the point of this is to make sure everything fits up right, that everything's at the right geometries, and then I'm just tacking it together and I'll weld it out on the table. Okay, well now that that works, I should probably weld it to the bucket or weld the bucket out one. I'm just going to go ahead and fully weld out the quick attach bracket. I'm going to weld the back side of this bucket and get it tacked into place so I don't have to worry about not being able to get into certain areas to be able to weld it. At least half of it is welded out now. I reckon now's a good time to see how much it's warped or if it has at all. This is 48 and 5 sixteenths. 48 and a little under a quarter. I'm sure after I get to digging some stumps up with it, it's, it's probably going to get a little more warped than it is. We'll find out how well this thing holds up. Good thing is there's always room for more modifications. I have plans on this to actually add a grapple to it later on. That's why there's the serrated edges in this bucket. Because I'm gonna build a grapple to go on top of it with some more serrated edges on it and whenever I rip the stump up or if I'm moving some trees I've cut, I'll be able to scoop under it and just grab onto it and take off. The good thing about welding on a bench instead of like working in the field is you don't really want to weld downhill. It's not structural. If you really want it to be a good, strong weld, then you need to orientate your workpiece. Think smart about welding everything out. Now that I got this part here, I can weld all the welds on top here. I can weld them flat and that's you don't have to worry about it not being strong. You're getting plenty of heat and plenty of penetration in. And then whenever you, you get done welding all of this, you just rotate your piece around and then you can weld all these areas flat. I don't think me welding this downhill is gonna be an issue because I'm already running the welder hotter than what it should be. So I'm not really worried about getting uh, not getting enough penetration and it's a lot quicker if you weld downhill now the portion that of this plate that actually hooks to my skidster this main plate here there's a pin that drops through here to lock it in place that you would definitely want to try to get the strongest weld possible on and I can only weld this one side if I weld the inside then I won't be able to like my, there's another plate on the skidster that just bolt like slaps up to it and pulls it tight. I need that to be perfectly flush. If I put a weld in there, it's gonna kick it off and everything ain't gonna line up like it should.
This is going to be the teeth that I can grab the roots with and rip them apart. This portion is going to be replaceable. I'll have four holes here for carriage bolts to come through. This is going to be the end of my bucket that I'm actually going to have the cutting edge on. I'll be able to remove this and have a flat no tooth bucket or I can have the teeth attachment on. I'm pretty much going to sandwich these pieces and then these teeth here will lay on top and I just want some extra support to, for this edge here. I cut this out a half inch plate I had. This is probably overkill. I'm not afraid to admit that. But I would much rather never have to remake this again. But I'm going to square everything up, tack all this together, and then clamp it and I'll drill out these holes here so the bolt will go all the way through. And then when I weld this, tack the whole unit in, everything will line up as it should. Kind of want to double check this. And these are just drop straight in. And I'll be able to put a nut on the top. And it shouldn't be in the way of nothing. Nope, she's stuck now. I put it in there even. So it should be all right. That's fully welded out. Pretty close. This doesn't quite have the where the corners meet up. Normally you want to kind of have a hole to fill there. I don't have that. I kind of flushed it up too much. So I'm just going to take my grinder with a rock wheel and I'm going to kind of groove this out so I can get as much heat and weld into it as I can. This works much better if you already have a used rock wheel that kind of has a rounded edge on it. It really just lets you get in there and groove it out a lot better than a square edged one would, like a new one. Now you can see how I groove this out. I probably took it down eighth inch, maybe not quite, but now I can get a weld puddle in there. And whenever this rubs against the dirt and finally, you know, after years of use and it makes it back flush, I'll still have weld in there tying these two panels together. And you don't have to worry about it coming apart. Oh, that's bright. You gotta remember to change your hood settings. Should have beveled that. I'm gonna have to grind the edge of this too so that it fit in there with the weld. I think I'm just gonna weld it solid on both sides here.
looks good. Now I'll just cut me an edge on the front here with the grinder and just kind of bevel it. Groove this out, weld it out, then I'll weld this inside portion too and probably just smooth it out a little bit. Or I'll just bevel the actual teeth portion here. With a little persuasion, that'll go right on. Then I can drill my holes. Everything will be ready. God, I think it's gonna work wonderfully. I'm not gonna lie, this is feeling kind of sketchy. Definitely gonna have to have more braces. I can see where the bottom of the bucket's been uh, contorting a little bit. She's no longer straight. We had failure. Exactly what I thought would happen happened. This is a big ass damn stump. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to uh, stiffen her up right there. All right, I'm gonna say Stump wins this battle for now.
I got the one gusset or my brace. This is the one that's going to go on the inside. It'll go in there right when I straighten it out. I have this side correct. It's actually too far. I got to bring it down. I'm just going to get it all tacked in and I'll show you when it's done. Okay. She's definitely much better than she was. These are the plates I put in. Put one on each side, so now I have a 9 16 thick piece here, and I'm gonna weld all of this completely solid. I run out of MIG wire and had to switch to a flux core, but I just pretty much done some one inch welds all around. I got all my gusset or my extra strength plate here to thicken up this side wall. I got it welded all the way around so dirt can't pack up under it and you know once you pack dirt under it he'll spread that apart and that's not good for buckets and stuff like that. He'll end up failing later on. I got plug welds through this area here to really tie these pieces together. And then on the outside face i done the same exact thing and I got these big pieces cut out where I could get a weld through that whole area and got one plug weld here and really tied it in good to the front but it turned out very well this is our final product teeth are all on everything's bolted down put me a coat of primer and paint on it everything looks as it should now we'll see how much work we get done with it should be stout enough for what I need thanks everyone for watching if you don't mind give me a like subscribe and check out my channel for more I'll catch y'all next time